Can I just say thank you very much for having a website? <laughs> Because that makes my job so much easier for when I go, here's what they do. Yeah, I do need to update it. I gave it a quick update like two weeks ago. Oh my. Uh, but like, but like patch bandages on an open wound kind of thing. You, the fact that you've updated it this year is 30 times better than any comedian that's been on here. <laughs> yeah. Because I've been on there and it'd be like, gigs, 2017, 2018. And I'm like, that's not really kind of up to date. Yeah. That's I fine. also need headshots with blonde hair. It's been like two years. Yeah, I was going to say they were all very... I just got new headshots because the other ones, I had like this fucking weird shaped head. <laughs> Sorry, or, did you get your head changed? No, it was just like the way my hair was sitting, it was like it was like little mini horns at the top of my head. <laughs> right. Because it was all just it was starting... Like it was in half? starting to kind of come down like that. Mm. And I looked so fucking stupid, Kate. So stupid. To the point where... I was like, all right, I'll post these online. I think my head looks weird, but I don't know if it does. <laughs> so I'll just put the poster out there. And it's probably this time last year for my fringe poster. I put it and out. And my friends will be honest and kind about it. Gareth Waugh, within <laughs> 10 seconds of it being posted, is like, is this your real head? And I was like, fuck, it is. Look, it does look stupid. <laughs> like my worst fears were confirmed before my phone had even locked. <laughs> Gareth was just like in there, like, your head looks weird. And I was like, damn it. It does look weird. It's hard because like you also were... It's like we're allowed to change as humans, I know. but not for your headshots. No, no. God, no, you no, You must stay no. the same. Like, people always told me like, oh, you're kind of like catfishing a bit with those old pictures. With those horns. Yeah. It, oh, see, I'll, I'll show you the picture after this. It's so Please. fucking strange. But yeah, it's so a lot of the podcast is just kind of talking about like fun things and comedy, mad gigs, uh, interesting. Like, you were just doing, I'll tell you what, why don't we just start? You were just doing Kelburn Festival at the I weekend. Did How did that? So... We've just talked about pre-recording that you were sleeping in a, some awkward conditions <laughs> <laughs> before the after. Oh, sorry, after the show. After you were only the up show. There for the Friday night. This was it. I rocked up to Kelburn, uh, pouring rain, but excited. Yeah. Set up the tent, a little bit angry. Because, <laughs> Why? <laughs> because okay, so it was my flatmate's tent, but he was gone. He was going to come to Kelburn on Sunday, so right. I was going to use it the first night. Leave it up. He uses it. He takes it down. Beautiful, Perfect. right? Great. Um, and so we, me and my friend start setting it up. And then uh, my other roommate goes, oh, since you're leaving the tent, like set it up near ours. And I was like, great. Where are you? But it's Kelburn. There's a, a thousand people there. Yep. The service. She shares her location. It's not where she is. I am like wandering around. It's raining. We we o already had opened the tent, so we're just like walking around with like all the tent uh, tentacles just dragging in the mud, trying to, and like being like, eh, no, just yelling my roommate's oh, name. Oh god! And it takes about ten minutes for me to go like, I'm furious. Yeah, <laughs> and it's no one's fault. I'm like, I I understand it's it's the service, and I you know, but I was just like. I just want, just want to be dry. <laughs> I just want to be dry. Did you get wet shoes, wet feet? Oh, yeah. Wet feet is the start of me being fucking furious. Furious. But, and because you can't dry them yeah. when you're not, when you're tanning. Yeah. I, my shoe, I'm wearing them now because I fixed them, but my shoe, uh, like the, it pulled apart. And when I was stomping on the metal things, uh, the, the pegs for the yeah. tent, oh. broke through the bottom of my shoe. Okay. How dumb. Dumb. <laughs> Like, well, I was like kicking at it. Like, yeah, we're almost done. We got this tent up. And then I just heard like a pop. And I was like, uh, no. it flew too close to the sun. Yeah. I was too excited. That is like wet socks to me at any point. It's, I'm like fucking livid. I can't handle it. Oh my God. And then there was a, like a sauna set up at the festival. Yes. <laughs> which love is it. like. my. I was like, mm, maybe that's like a morning activity where it's been wiped down. Yes. But exciting because it was warm and you're like oh that might be nice and she welcomed you in she was so lovely she's like grab some tea it smelled like eucalyptus you're like oh my god we should pay to go in there that'd yeah. be amazing um had just just started seeing this person that i'm with so i was like yeah let's see each other naked in a sauna for an hour that'd be great let me just look at all let me was show it, you all my flaws in the i'm assuming it was in pitch black or elf <laughs> I've not, because I've done the... A pitch uh, black sauna? Yeah, I did one at Glastonbury years ago. I think that there's a, 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 a one of my earlier podcasts is just me ranting and me, going mad on stories about stuff. So you went into the sauna? I went into the naked sauna with some of my friends. It was pitch black and I didn't think that anyone could see me because when I walked in, like I couldn't see them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But obviously they had all been in there. Their eyes have adjusted. Their eyes have adjusted. So I'm in the 
I'm stretching it. Like, no, there's no seats left. So I'm just standing in this thing like that. And I can just hear people, like, giggling. And I'm like, why the fuck are people giggling? And then I just... Suddenly my eyes start kind of, kind of adjust into the dark and I start seeing shapes. And then I literally out of nowhere, a hand just kind of grabbed my hand and pulled me down into a seat, gave me a drink of water and just went, here, drink this. And I was did you like, know that hand? Did not know the hand. Wow. So then I'm sitting down in the chair, looking back up at the little mini door where people are coming in. The next person came in and I could see everything. everything. And I was just like, oh no, everyone saw me stretching up. But I mean, that, you could be doing more embarrassing things. There, that, that is true, Kate. That yeah. is true. Thankfully, no one did that in that really small sauna. <laughs> but that was, so that's exactly what but happened. But even just like scratching your butt a bit, you know? I think like I did a that. Scratch I, is kind of just like, it looked like you were like, hey, ladies, you know? <laughs> Which is fine. I don't even, I would love to have seen what I did. I think there was definitely a wee arse scratch in there somewhere, <laughs> Kate. It wasn't good. Whatever it was, it was making the whole room laugh. Yeah. Not intentionally. Was it worth it to go in the sauna? Yes, it was. Because it was just a bit of a away from the festival yeah. madness. And warm. And warm. When yeah. it's Scottish rainy. Anyway, we're sitting going like, yeah, maybe let's do it. And then someone, this person I was with, uh, knew, walked that she was trying to have... <laughs> maybe I shouldn't tell other people's secrets. We won't name them. And you can t- we can take it out at the end if you want. <laughs> that she was trying to avoid, walked in and went into the sauna. So then no. it was just like, well, we can't. But I was like, imagine if we had gone in right away. And then the one person you're like, oh, no, I told this person I wasn't going to be at the festival. Now I am at the festival last minute. And then you're just naked in the sauna and then <laughs> in walks that one inescapable. As if that's already like, it's so awkward already. Yes. And then you have to then have an awkward conversation naked. It's a perfect sitcom. Fucking hell. Yeah. And so... You didn't go in the sauna at all? Didn't go in the sauna, ran away, got rejuvenated by a band called the Farting, uh, fucking, the Farting Suffragettes. <laughs> They're fuck, fucking from Edinburgh. Yeah. Amazing. Right. The energy. The guitarist's name was Griselda. Um, uh, the lead singer was Irish and like slowly took off more clothes during the set. The starting song was really like, it was like, we are the farting suffragettes. You're like, well, fucking Sold. does what it says on the tin. Yeah. They also, there's like kids. And she's like, just so you know, there's some, you know, sexual uh, description okay. within this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the next song is like about discharge. <sighs> And then these twelve-year-old kids like. Well, I mean, what's discharge? Wow! Like, <laughs> they they were, I mean, I don't think. Yeah, they were listening. There was another about a cum monkey. Anyway, rejuvenated us. Went back, got changed to do my show. And what I've learned is that like not a lot of people go to Kelburn for comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and this was at ten at night. Ten at night, freezing cold. Everyone's off their face on multiple drugs. Uh, I was not even part of a comedy show. I was part of a like. A cabaret. Okay. So I was the only like comedian. There was musical comedy. There was burlesque dancers. Yeah. The host. Everyone was amazing. It just wasn't like prime comedy. No. no. At time, because the host was someone who wore like a animal bone mask. Amazing. And like had these balloon tits that they popped and like <laughs> lingerie. Incredible. They also had like this uh, voice changer, so their mic was like. Welcome to the comedy cabaret. Like, That's just what you want. <laughs> so they do a little dance, pop their tits, and then it's like, well, are you ready for your first person? And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Were you on first? Yes. Oh, okay. But they forgot that I was on first, so they were like, welcome. This other person it said a different name. And then I looked around to the text. I said, what do I do? And they said, well, the other person isn't ready yet. So you need to go on. You're on first. You need to go on. Go. So I had to walk up and say, I'm not that person that you have just been introduced to. Also, the host forgot to switch off their voice changer. No. So instead, Are you what I said, her, I'm I was like, oh, I'm good. Yeah, her. And I was like, please make it stop. <laughs> I'm not who he says I am. Holy fuck. Had an existential crisis on stage. 
and then tried to make these people laugh with tr- tried true jokes, right? Tested jokes. These are funny jokes and they are landing. But like, again, it's a festival. So like some people are like, yeah, ha, I'm going to chat to my friend for a minute. I'm like, yeah, I would yeah. do the same thing. Yeah, it's just not, it's not built for it's it. It's not great. Um, Were you doing 10, 15, 20? 15. Also tough. <laughs> tough, 15. tough when it, they've like, here's a weird uh, character comedy, uh, other name. And I'm like, I am not that. I'm Kate Hammer. Please like me. Here's my 15 minutes. You've not been warmed up. Here's my 15 minutes. Fuck. I mean, you want all the perfect conditions for comedy and to have none of them. Yeah. But I, I get, everyone was amazing and super nice. But it's like when you're like, ooh, that was a shift. That was a shift I put in. I had to work for those laughs. Also, I find that audiences like that love crowd work. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That's don't all they want. like jokes. Yeah. You're like, let me give you some material I've worked on. They're like, yeah. No. They're like, remove their, no thank yeah, you. Yeah, just slag my job, slag my face, slag my wife, slag yeah. my husband, anything. I try and like set people up in the audience. That's my new thing. Oh, yeah. nice. I'm like, you single? Is anyone else single? And then I try and like uh, add a recent gig, All Mouth, um, which is the every last Thursday at, <laughs> at the... Um, at insert. In Glasgow. <laughs> In Glasgow. Dude, I'm not well. I'm not well today. <laughs> At Glasgow. Please let me find it later. Right. Okay. okay we'll, we'll add it in. All mouth comedy. All mouth Great. comedy. Great. Queer comedy. Venue. Amazing. Like so much fun. Had a glass of wine before I went on. So I was extra feeling like, hello. Yeah. yeah. Wearing a jumpsuit that was very tight. So tight that like when you lean over, you just stop. Yep. Because yeah, you know. I know. How do you know? <laughs> I've been in some mad fancy dress costumes over the years. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in many like that. <laughs> I've never been in a jumpsuit jumpsuit. Right. It's the last I thing where you like, I can't fall over. And there's something nice about that. Yeah. It's very, um, anyway, uh, I got two guys up and then I was like, oh, we'll pretend like, oh, millionaire. Uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Lights. Doo, 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 doo. And the tech was really fun. Changed up the lighting. Like, and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then every time they said something that they did were and liked about the other person, I made them take a step forward. Then I realized Did I these people know each other. They had just I had met you introduced I made them, them on meet. stage. Love yeah. it. In front of the stage. <laughs> the stage is for performers. <laughs> the stage is for professionals. And go, I get the fucking feet off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to touch it. I slapped his hand. And then but as they got closer, this is when like because I love improvising on stage. Yes. And like that's from the beginning, that's how I've done it. Um but there's a point where I go, oh, I don't have an out. Yeah, you don't know how this ends. Don't know how this ends, other than like unconsensually making two people kiss. Exactly. That's the only way you can end that. And and did you do that? (laughs) No. Good person, Kate. The rum shack. The rum shack. All mouth. (laughs) Ten minutes later. Rum shack. So they got really close. And then I think you could just see the panic in my eyes where I went, well, we'll come back to this later. And then I never (laughs) did. But they're just still standing there. I made them sit down. I was like, well, great. Maybe you can talk later. And because uh, I was like, I just, what other way, you know, yeah, you could have done other than me kissing them. Which is a bit of a leap. It's Because it's, it, I don't know if they want to. Exactly. And it's just like, I, I went to a comedy show and the host sexually harassed me. It's not a great review for the venue when it's just done. But now. what if the review is, I went to a comedy show, found the love of my life. That would have been sweet. And kissed Kate Hammer. <laughs> Also, aside, Kate Hammer. <laughs> so you could have, I suppose it's only now, you could have done number exchange, Instagram, swap Instagrams, swap. talk afterwards. Oh, I could have done like, give me your Tinder bio. There we go. There we go. There we go. Can we just go back in time real quick? It's funny, you always, these things happen, you learn it, you go, the next time this happens, I'm going to do this. It never happens again. And then that will never happen never. again. Because it's never, it always when you f- try and force that again, people be like, oh, that doesn't feel... Exactly. It doesn't feel right. I think people as audiences want honesty and we can tell when it's not honest and it bugs the hell out of them. Yeah. And yeah. that's why when you do jokes again and again and again, I don't understand how people do cross country tours like Phil Wang. How is he making those joke jokes work for six months? Because we do jokes for six months and suddenly yeah, some they just it, stop working. And they just kind of go, oh, when you listen back, like, I'm saying it the exact same exact same i'm saying it the exact same it's, there's nothing changing in this it's not sentence. topical it's a forever joke it's about me shitting myself <laughs> oh funny my God. forever love those funny forever <laughs> 
So why is it not working? Yeah, that's one of the most frustrating. Because you're, you're a storyteller as well, aren't you, Kate? Yeah, and I love storytelling because Same. you don't have to worry about the jokes. You're like, when, when it's also funny, people are like, huh, I do declare. Like, <laughs> yeah, oh, my oh, God. Yeah. Well, do you think, like, so I, I love storytelling. That's what I've done since, like, probably, like, the very beginning. I've always done that. Do you find that it's just, like, mad things always happen to you? And then, so you just kind of go, oh, this fucking, yeah, I was just going to tell that on stage. Because I find that mad shit always happens to me. So I just go, that's a new bit. Always happens to me. Yeah. Are you the same? Um, yes. I feel like for the last little while, I haven't been writing as much of my uh, personal life. I've kind of stopped journaling. Look, what, what I'm trying to say is I'm emotionally a mess. I've stopped going to therapy. <laughs> Love it. Perfect conditions to- for comedy. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> but I need to keep track of things more because it is like... Uh, you, f- you will forget about them yeah. unless you, and it can be the smallest thing, but it's your, your personal point of view and your take on it yeah. that really makes it, you know, stick and come to life. So I do want to get, bring that back in because yeah, I love, yeah. I will actually, yeah, I tend to drop bits as fast as I'll pick them up. Oh my so God. when I went to Montreal last to do, uh, when I was back visiting and I did some sets, something happened on the way to the comedy club where I like, was mad at myself for like kind of edging on being late because I have ADHD. Okay, uh, (laughs) you're very early today. Can I just say? (laughs) I know, because I took a train at a set time. Okay, got you. And there's panic. (laughs) Um, And like, uh, so being on time, so I was walking to the metro and I was like, oh, which is a subway and like uh, mad at myself. And then something happened on the way down the stairs where there was a man just in the middle walking down the middle of the stairs and kind of taking up so much space you couldn't really get around him. And uh-huh. I was so, I was like, who do you think you are? Fuck you think you. your time is more valuable than me? You think you're better than me? Like you think you're, uh, oh. yeah. and I was like, scooted around him on the other side of the stairs, fucking ran so fast. Like it's a day for women. Yeah. So excited. Got on the Metro, went a few stops. I noticed it was going the wrong way. Because I was so high on my own supply of yeah. feminism, just like, yeah, like buzzing for yeah. women's rights. <laughs> we did it, ladies. But we're also on the wrong train. <laughs> we- <laughs> so Doesn't like, always work out. <laughs> freaked out, ran out. I was like, I don't have time to switch and go back. And so uh, ran outside, tried to get a taxi. It was a car with a decal on it. And it was driving away. I was like, what the hell? So I like ran after it. I'm still jet lagged. I'm like, I have drinking three Red Bulls. I'm like practically have been given wings. I'm chasing this car Love down. That. And then when it stops at a light, I like run up to it. I knock on its window. I go, what the fuck? And he's like, what? I say, aren't you a taxi? And he goes, no. <laughs> and I look down. It's one of those car share. She's just trying to do his groceries. And he has been chased down. By, by a lady. Um, it's probably seen in the wing where it's like, is she chasing me? Like literally Matrix running <laughs> after him. in the, in the yeah. wing. Where, oh, that's so good. And then I freaked out some more, finally found a cab because my phone wasn't working because I was in a different country. I hadn't set up like all these things. Found a cab, paid so much money to get to the club and it was fine. I could have easily been 10 minutes late. And oh, no one would have cared. But it was the first night. night. You don't want to be late because they can be really, you know. Yeah. And uh, basically spent all the money I made doing comedy that night on a taxi. Fucking. <laughs> oh, my God. You should have got those lift share cars. I hear they're really popular over there. <laughs> that person will have told that story <laughs> to their family when they got home. Like, I was just driving home from the shops. <laughs> Hello. Fucking woman bust on the window. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. That's, a- yeah. If someone just knocked on my window, was like, what the fuck? I would be like, I don't, I don't know. What is the fuck? I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, be like, did I date this woman? Did yeah. I upset her? <laughs> anyway, so that story, when like I told it that night, and that was like a part, like a fixture of my set for a bit, and then I just forgot about it, and I've yeah. never done it till today. <sighs> But it's weird how that, like, do you forget about bits? Yeah, I've, well, I have to, I've got them all written down. I have to have them all written down. My memory's so shit. So yeah. if they're not written down, like, almost word for word, what I have to say, I'm like, I don't fucking remember that bit. Like, I was, like, plotting for the Fringe show, and I was just like, 
like, what bits have I got? And then I looked, I was like, shit, that's a five minute bit. I completely forgot about that. Yes. I didn't do that last year. I was like, that's going in. Or some people will always be like, if it's good enough, you'll remember it. Like little jokes. No. I'm like, absolutely not. No, no. I don't There's know who those people are. I forget all the time. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> I always have to look at it and I'll go. So just before I go on stage, I will go through the notes on my phone and I'll go, right. Okay. That's what I've got to say. And I'll go, right. New bits on the hand. Everything yeah. like that. Yeah. It has to be done. Yeah. <sighs> I remember in Montreal, it was hard doing comedy because they've, so they've just for laughs. Yes. Which is amazing. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. Massive. Yeah but only for a month of the year. Yeah. And then they go away and English becomes the second language again. Yeah. Uh, and like, yeah, so it's a really, and there's not a lot of gigs mm -hmm. uh, and there's even less audience to go to all the it's gigs. It's a very industry type thing, isn't it? So I've JFL, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. And I've done Just for Laughs a few times when you're local. Uh, yeah, it's just, anyway, it's tricky because it's not a big scene. Right. And so... I find stand up, uh, especially there, was very male centric and competitive as hell. And would find people would find any reason or way to kind of like, once a guy came up to me after a set, which objectively, I mean, I hate myself, right? <laughs> Don't 99% of the time. Don't we all? Don't we all? We all hate ourselves. <laughs> Do you hate yourself? Everyone hates themselves. I've not met a, met a person that loves themselves. And if you have, they're a fucking wank. I find I have a dichotomy of self-esteem where like half the time you're like, wow, I deserve nothing and I need to do better. I need to be better. Yeah. And then the other half the time I'm like, literally everyone's in love with me. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy how charming I am. This is brilliant. Yeah. Anyway, this guy and objectively like had a better set than him. Mm -hmm. like, it was better received. But he came up to me after and uh, said, um, well, you're more of a storyteller, not not a stand up. Oh, and that's how North American comedy is really seen, right? Like my first come time going to the Edinburgh Fringe, like blew my mind of of like, oh, this is allowed because you don't do fuck like Simon Amstel. I used to watch that on YouTube in Canada over and over again. The do nothing special because mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, you can be funny, be really brutally honest and vulnerable, and learn something at the end of a comedy special oh my god in north america it's very like joke 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 to joke joke bit joke joke so they, they, end they, on they... a bad joke about sex workers like <laughs> you're like oh great i watched an hour for that michael yeah. che thank you <laughs> so they, that's looked down on is it yeah. almost like higher? oh my god also in montreal i would be very much seen as like an alternative comedian being like oh look at her weird bits here i'm i'm more clubby which is yeah. so strange even though I'll have jokes about, you know, uh, I mean, I've never done it here. Again, a forgotten bit. I used to have this bit where um, I find it really f funny that if a baby was a bartender and like uh, because he couldn't really hold his neck, like yeah. a newborn baby. Yeah. And he'd be like trying to make a Negroni while like, whoa, <laughs> and he wouldn't have art object permanency. Yeah. So you would take a drink. He'd be like, where the fuck did that go? <laughs> <clears throat> and Good. I found that very funny. So I had this whole bit. I can't remember, but he kept getting younger. Um, there was a song involved. His name was Baby Dev. Anyway, a bit weird, but yeah. still, I think here you'd Got be like, that, yeah. that's run of the mill. Yeah. You're like, have you seen Noel Fielding's 45 minutes on shadows and wind, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. So what's your, do you have like a favorite story that you've told on stage do you have one because i think the best thing about storytelling mm -hmm. is that no one else has got that story yes no one else could copy it, which is what i was so worried about when i started stealing people's jokes so I went, if i just write <laughs> if i just write stories that's only happened to me no one can accuse that of no totally i this is it i think lately i've seen a bunch of great comedians but i was like there's nothing in your set that speaks to you yeah it's like your opinions on uh weddings or you're this which and they're all great jokes yeah but they're someone else could tell the same ones exactly, and i wouldn't yeah. be able to tell the difference and it's or the same topic you, yeah, could, yeah, you yeah. can go to a stand-up night and 10 people could tell the same joke technically yes exactly yeah. and that's i agree where you're like well it's just safer to tell something that could only be mine yes um i mean no one else is going around saying they have a wide set vagina which is another <laughs> staple joke in my set. i'm not i'll be honest Kate. i'm not well <laughs> <laughs> not yet <laughs> might steal that bit let's see how it goes this is the thing where you're just like be, most people can't steal my set nor would they want to yeah that's a very good point <laughs> being like i grew up in a goat farm with three older brothers i'm like uh-huh <laughs> really yeah because i did yes 
But like if someone else says that, I'll be like... Yeah, no one's got that. No one's got that. Yeah, that's that's the beautiful thing about these stories that just kind of go, fucking beat that. Yeah. And you can just pack it with like line after line after line. Funny shit. I'm good. Yes. Did funny shit happen on the farm? Look, um, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Went did back have, into my repressed memories. Did you have any stories that you've taken from the farm and put it on stage? I have used the farm for bits. So, like, again, I've not done it in a while, but I used to have a bit about um, growing up on a goat farm and uh, it not being... <laughs> It being really hard to masturbate because whenever I got close to touching myself, a goat would yell in the distance. <laughs> Which is the most unsettling noise ever. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, fuck. Like, how does it know? Is it getting closer or am I? You know? Just like, like it's it. a fun one, but it is a bit edgy in the way that uh, not everyone's into goat fucking. And I do. No. I, <laughs> not everyone. No. <laughs> and not our viewers. <laughs> like, Some of them. And if you're out there, I do end stop it listening. with a classic, like, don't worry, no goats were harmed in my childhood. They all left very satisfied. And that's hey. I like, yay. Also, the kicker line was, You've, you might find it hard to listen to me talk about, like, coming while in goats. But it's, it's harder for me because I lived it, you know? Yeah. I can't come unless I fuck a goat. <laughs> or no, wait, how did that go? Something well, like I'm, that. I'm that's, editing it. That's, that's how that bit is ending. <laughs> It's basically how it went. And I remember the first time I said that joke, I was on the train to the gig. You and said I was, the joke on the train? <laughs> <laughs> I was writing. I was like, oh, I did. And it, we did terrify because it was two friends. And they did. There was another man like sitting beside them. And he was just like. <laughs> what? Where are they going? Where are they going? And I couldn't find the end. It was like, I come whenever and i was like is it goat cheese goat's milk goat soap like yeah. what is the trigger like what's the good line and then you just go for the most you know most obvious but also the le like something you'd never say which is fuck a goat yeah and it was hard to have you ever written that down in joke books because anytime i write stuff down like that i go i hope no one finds this book <laughs> oh i said it on stage and went through to a competition for that joke I love it. No, but even just like the, the that's fine. But to have that written down, and yeah. then for you, if you lost that book, oh yeah, and yeah, and then yeah. someone on the train goes, "Who is this person?" Actually, once at the monkey, uh, Ian from the Monkey Barrel was like, "We have your comedy notebook here," and I was like, "How did no. they know? <laughs> what did I write in that?" So I picked it up and I was like, "I'm so sorry." Oh I was god! Like, and I did ask. I was like. Was it, like, which joke did you know was mine? He was like, oh, I didn't open it. Someone in staff did. I was like, oh, damn. Yeah, it feels very, like, if I found a joke book, I would just kind of, I wouldn't want to look through it. It's just so much mad shit in these oh, books. Oh, illegal, for sure. Oh, yeah, okay. The, some of the stuff I've written down over the years, I've gone, what the fuck is wrong with me? Yeah. You cannot say that in public, but you did. But I did. <laughs> and I continue, and I have again. Excellent. Love yeah. that. That's the life of a comedian. But you asked for my favorite story. I don't know if I have a favorite story. I don't know if I've, I don't know if I've told that story yet. Yeah. My favorite one. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it'll come one day. I was fucking, Sorry. That was a hell of a flex. <laughs> one day. It up, yeah. One day. Yeah, no, I think that's it. I was kind of just constantly just like, almost if like a friend show, I've maybe got like two or three stories, then they're kind of bits in between. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm constantly just looking for the new yeah. story. Yeah. Which is tough. Because if just your life becomes boring, then you've got no stories. And I'm like, ah, oh, that can't happen. And you just need and magic to keep trying happening. trying to make interesting things happen. Yeah, that's when you start going like, I'm going to go and join a group that does <laughs> the fucking naked pottery or something like that. The and then farting people, suffragettes. The farting suffragettes. Did they fart, by the way? No. No, oh, disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> they were was... just good at music. That's all. And that's all we can ask for from the farting suffragettes. <laughs> You gotta keep it fresh and exciting for you. I oh, think. Yeah, you do, you do. If you yeah. go on stage and you say the same set you've done for weeks on end, it's soul destroying. Yeah, you have to change it up. Even if it's just like a new line. Because I think also it's it's so creepy when different audiences find different things funny yeah because that's when you're like okay you need to kind of be able to expect what are the laugh points yeah but you can't when you're doing storytelling because it's just gonna depend yeah um and at one time the last gig at the monkey barrel i did there was one time where they laughed so much at a joke i was like what the fuck happened? Like, what yeah. is something else going on? Does it normally go like that? Because I was like, you guys liked it, but because I was doing the seven and nine. Yeah. So seven p.m. 
They liked it. So 9 p.m. Loved it. And I went. Yeah. And you, then you get in your, you start getting in your head because you start going like, what, what the fuck's happening here? Yeah. And you can't just go like, keep going. No. Because you're like, leave, pause for laughter, two, three, <laughs> like, fuck, <laughs> usually on the count to one. Yeah. And like, but also I'm so aware because how many comedians do you watch who don't, aren't fully aware? I mean, none of us are fully aware, but like aren't fully aware of the way they come off. Mm -hmm. So I've seen, there's this one comedian who, um, instead of saying, um, he would just say like, oh my God. And like as a filler, so you it's could see him thinking. So he'd be like, say a joke. Huh. Oh my God. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> and then like say his next joke. And I'd be like, so at the gig, it was like full, half full of comedians. So we all start laughing very hard at like at these fellow. little ticks of like, yeah, a joke. Huh. Anyway, and then like just going in and I'm giving it this weird jazzy. It was just, he just said it normally, but it was just like the way he did say, yeah. oh my God, like oh my that. God. Yeah, it's just like, oh my God. <laughs> anyway, people say, oh, I'm really good looking. You're like, what is going oh on? Oh my God. <laughs> but you could tell he didn't realize that the, the why we were laughing. Yeah. And if you do, then you can play with that and up that and then it becomes its own joke. Yeah. But because he didn't realize he was kind of confused and panicking. And I think maybe he was like, everyone's really dumb and getting a joke five seconds after I tell oh, it. Oh, fuck. It's <laughs> ruined the guy's night. Yeah. Or I saw another comedian saying thing. He said something slightly like in a weird way. And then there was laughter and, I, and he kind of just went like, oh, that was weird. Or like he called it out and I was like, no, just like. Oh. Just keep going. Yeah. Just keep going. All these little bits that just like stop you in your stride. And you yeah. just, sometimes you just kind of go, what, what the fuck was I talking about? Shit. Because I think you're also signaling to the audience that you're not with them. Yeah. And I think that's then the audience goes, uh, and they kind yeah. of close off a bit. So it's hard to win them back. Yeah. And I think if you're doing a story and you're kind of so used to the lines, 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 you, you then just become like a robot. Yeah. And they're like, oh, this he's not really selling it. Yeah. So you have to keep, remember to sell it as you're doing yes. the things. You have to remember that as you remember the lines, you remember you're in time. <sighs> yeah. Exhausting, Kate. Or Exhausting. sometimes you forget, like you'll, you'll drop a line and you're like, why didn't the story work tonight? And you're like, oh, because a key in, bit of information. <laughs> yeah, I did not tell them did I was in a naked sauna. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's the most stressful part is like when you get too comfortable with it, you're going to drop things and then you lose laughter, yeah. you lose understanding and then you go, pfft. Well, dumb the fuck audience. is wrong with these people? Like, I'm not going to blame the audience, but that was a bad audience. <laughs> I love that. We've all done it as well. I mean, you're in your head, you want to go, there was shit. And then it was you. like, even at Kelburn, I was like, I, what could I have done differently to make that a better show? Because yeah. it was okay. But there was a lot of times where I was like, I'm dying up here. <laughs> like, hey, give me a break. What's the deal with airplane <laughs> saunas ah like i didn't know i was like oh i literally stepped off the stage until my friend i just said kill me and yeah. then i walked away actually there's um so i used to do a ton of improv in montreal okay i was and, gonna ask about this yes okay uh and one teacher i had there joe he was amazing i love him he i think gave me the best it wasn't advice he just yeah. told me the story about one time they did an improv show and he felt like it went so badly that, so he actually lived in Vermont. Okay. So it was across, in the, across US. the border. But it wasn't that. It was like two hours. Yeah. It's quite close. Um, so he got, he just uh, walked off stage into the green room, walked out of the building, went into his car, dr left the country, no. went to his home to Vermont. And his, by the time anyone like noticed like an hour after like the show ended and they're grabbing drinks, they're like, Joe, where'd you go? And he's like, I'm in the United States of America. <laughs> Please do not contact me. Like, I was like... That's amazing. That is, a, I've never heard that before. Because That's... you want that feeling of like, I need to leave the country. Yeah, and he did. And even if it didn't go that badly, you need to feel like you, you just need just... to get as far away from that gig as possible. <laughs> you just need to like, walk. Yeah. Oh walk my into God. the ocean, let it take you. This is going to be my thing. So, like, obviously, I know, like, I've never been to like improv, sketch shows, and anything like that. But when do you get like, because you get mad audiences in comedy, what the audience is like at them? Are they all like really like, like appreciative, welcome in, what the audience is like at these shows. I mean, it's, yeah, look, I've improv, improv on stage is some of the best performance, comedic performance or otherwise I've seen in my life. Okay. It's also some of the worst. 
is some it does get, terrible. It gets a bad rap. When it's bad, it's bad, man. Yeah. When it's bad, it's <laughs> it's bad. It makes you question a lot of things. But when it's good, yeah. there's fucking there's nothing like being in an improv room and everything sparks are flying and people a group gets it and you they're yeah. dropping stuff. The other people are picking it right up and you're like, Wah! like it's just yeah. the callbacks they're able to make. And I loved doing that. And I still, I really miss it. And I want to get more involved here. It's just like about it's finding the time. Is it a thing in Scotland? It's so much less of a thing, but I yeah. did like there's Glasgow improv theater and I like had a meeting with them and I have yet to email to be like, here's my, here's what I can do. Um, <laughs> but, but like, it's just, there's, it's such a muscle in the brain yeah. that is so nice to like, and I think for ADHD is really satisfying of being able to remember everything that just happened, be in the present, but also thinking ahead uh -huh. and going, oh, if I say this line, that'll set you up for this joke. And then we can carry that. The like, But also then adapting that constantly based on what other people are right, doing. Right. Okay, cool. And it's so satisfying to just be like, da, 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 like juggling yeah, with all four limbs. Everything's landing. What, or dropping. But then you're like, you have each other's back. Yeah. And in stand-up, I remember my second ever gig. I got real cocky because I got paid for my second ever gig. What the I know. Fuck? My first gig went really well. And I went, this is the opposite of what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to go back and then you get better. I did well. I got asked to do a paid gig. Five bucks. Still. But in Canada. <laughs> in Montreal, that was like money oh, someone's doing well for us <laughs> and i sat down at the back with the comedians and then another guy just looked at me he was like had his notebook uh writing stuff da, 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 da. and i was like oh i i don't have a notebook i just like a fucking asshole but i didn't mean to i was just kind of like oh no everyone's writing stuff down but i'm just like i'm just gonna go out there and do the same people as the first loved show. it when i like just kind of said my jokes and then yeah. uh went up it was okay. There was a couple times it was like whew, a joke dropped and I was like, <gasps> you know, that didn't happen the first time. Uh, but yeah, I got, got paid. But also a guy at that gig at the back was like, oh, so uh, I haven't seen you around. I was like, oh yeah, this is my second gig. And he got clearly like furious. Oh, I would be as well. Furious. I was like, oh, really? fucking out of my mind on anger. Why? Because you'd be like, you're getting fucking paid already? <laughs> Five bucks. That's like three pounds. Yeah, I know, but it's it's the, it's the symbolism. It's the symbolism. It's the symbolism. And you kind of go and like, I went about two years without getting fucking paid. <laughs> <laughs> so he was furious and then he basically just looks at me and goes, well, there aren't a lot of seats at the table. Do you speak French? And I was like, well, I do, but not like bilingual. And I was like, well, you're never going to make it because you oh, have to speak right. French to make money. So good luck. And I was like, you know, too new and young. And I was like, oh, thank you. And I was like, but right, right away, I was like, what an asshole. What a deck move that is. What a is. jealous, like, why not? Be like, there aren't a lot of women on the scene. How can I help <laughs> He's you? He's like, fuck you, never come back. He was like, you're going to take my seat. I've been working There's on years. There's not a lot of seats this. at the table. What a gimp. I know. What a gimp energy that I is know. to be talk about a table. Yeah, because I started an improv and sketch. Right. So starting this, like, feeling of... Uh, I, I also loved sketch because uh, I have a good short-term memory. So, mm -hmm. like... Uh, I always felt like if someone else forgot their lines, I could, you know, pick it up or make make it for them. But also you trust that they could do the same for you. Yeah. As long as it's funny and you're having fun on stage, then the audience is going to have fun. It's the most important thing. Yes. So then going to stand up with such a whiplash of like, everyone hates you and they don't <laughs> want you to succeed. And you're like, shit. <laughs> yeah. In the beginning, everyone, you're uh, Every man for himself in the beginning. Yeah. Everyone fucking, no one's got each other's back. Going from improv where we literally say before going on the stage, we pat each other's back. Do you and actually? Go, I got your back. Do you? Yeah. And you'd know you can't fail because for six people to fail, well, again, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to watch. It's funny, like the pat on the back. The, view, the, the, the most you get in Scotland is someone just kind of going, have a good one. <laughs> like the MC will just go, like that, it'll yeah. just be a thumbs up, no talking, or something. Else. Just as you're going through the stage, or someone go, "Have a good one." Yeah, that's the most encouragement you get before you go on stage in Scotland. What mm. do you do when you hate someone's set, and then they come off stage and you have to talk to them, and then you have to say, "Don't say good set, don't say good set, don't say good set," <laughs> and you say, "Great set." I don't. I just I I go in a full like if I've not been on yet, I'll just go. Hmm, let me just look at these uh, notes. <laughs> Really? Did that just happen? Sweat pouring down. Yeah, and I will just go. I will avoid eye contact. Yeah, and I'll just. I will just try and do my best to not speak to the person because you can't. I don't want to acknowledge it, but you also can't. 
say good set. <laughs> I panic. Do you? I'm such a people pleaser. And like, even it's like, you'll go, you'll watch their set and it's like something phobic or something ism. And you're like, yeah. Jesus Christ. okay. Like I, I actually am like fully cannot abide. Yeah. Like I cannot support what you're doing. I yeah. don't like seeing that on stage. Yeah. I'm not going to. And then, but it's like so hard not to to say something you have to say it feels like you have to say something when they or come otherwise back the you're the bad person yeah and it's just you in your mind you're more you're in your head so much because you're like right i need to say something i need to say something and if it's someone you like the set's gone bad it's easier yeah she can kind of go yes you can be honest yeah but if it's someone you hate or you just don't really know them i kind of go in and just like avoid all eye contact for the next 10 minutes that's that's my only game plan yeah. i just have to avoid it completely yeah what was it like what were your first few gigs in Scotland like then? Only literally the year the pandemic started was the year I was like, I'm going to really, you know what? I want to get further in comedy. So I'm really going to fucking, I'm going to go for it. Good on you. COVID. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, great. I'm going to move to Scotland. Did nothing. Glasgow was held back in the lockdown yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah. So it was extra, couldn't perform. I think my first gig back, oh, my first gig back was... Um, Improvised stand-up okay. uh, at a show in the Fringe. It was just like on the comedy forum. So I applied and they only let me know like two days ahead of time. And then like didn't put, then Glasgow got put back in a lockdown. So didn't perform again for yeah. six months. Um, and then did a <laughs> gong show. No. So I just like started with the worst types of shows. What gong show was it? It was at the Three Sisters. It was like a one-off. I don't think it did. Yeah, I don't think that came back. No, because um, they were like really, it was, uh, it was so fucked up because the host would then be like, come on, guys, you got to put up your, so then they started being ruthless. Yeah. And I remember I like made it two and a half minutes or something and then told a joke on a laugh One the last guy just went like put up it. And I was like, people are laughing. Fuck you. And instead of having a good reaction, like, yeah, f you know what? Fuck you. I just, I, I got so sad. I went, what? Oh. <laughs> like, like I, could, Me? I just literally, I was like any other time I could have riffed with it, but I was like, oh my God, what is this night? This is insane. And I just looked at me and I said, what? Why? <laughs> and then came to and went, and then just put the mic in and walked off. <laughs> And I was like, what the fuck? I need to practice my five minutes. And then, but it was worse still because someone came from like hours away, spent like, you know, 40 pounds These on a train ticket. These are the heartbreaking ones at gong shows. Heartbreaking. Comes up. Hello. Red flags. I was like, that's five hours and 40 pounds. He's never getting back because of a hello. Like I, uh. I was, and I was like, I'm never doing a gong show again because it's not, for storytellers, yeah, it's, you're fucked. You're fucked, and the and it's like I don't have five one-liners. It's not who I am. Yeah. It makes me. It's not honest. Yeah. So if I tried to do that, I don't think it would work well because especially if it goes to like a draw and you go, all right, do a minute of comedy. I go, I've got nothing of that. Yeah. So yeah. don't know what we do here. I literally just like fart around stage. <laughs> I don't like know a what suffragette. like the suffragette. <laughs> I don't know what I do. So we've actually come to the end, Kate. We've no, come at the end of the no. hour. Come at the end of the hour. There's just a few things before you go, though. Yeah. Uh, there is a part called Suggest a Guest, mm -hmm. where you get to suggest another person that you think is really funny and that you would want to see on a podcast. And I'll try and get them on the podcast. Amazing. I'm going to put you on the spot. Who would you like to suggest? Um, oh, do you know what? It might be tricky because I think he's moving down to London, but uh, Jin Hao Lin. Jin Hao? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you had Jin Hao on? No, I'm not a Jin Hao. Uh, Jin Hao. Love it. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And then last thing, uh, is there any films, TVs, uh, TV shows, albums you've listened to recently? You go, I fucking love that. More people need to hear about it. Ooh, okay. All right, music, films, anything you like. Do you, you think... Because <laughs> you can also you say... You think I don't listen to just YouTube playlists of music, Ralph? <laughs> you think... I find Spotify overwhelming. It That's is. my red flag. It is. It's I have so a Spotify account. Refuse to use it. <laughs> Refuse. The only reason I have an account is but keep, people keep sending me Spotify links and I'm like, for God's sake. Take my 9.99, but I don't want to use your service. No, I don't pay for that shit. Uh, I just go onto YouTube. I say best of indie music. Oh my God. Okay. October 2022. 
And I let the good times roll. So if you have not heard Best of Indie Music October 2022, it's really good. Highly wonderful. recommend it. There's Kate Sinoff. Boy Genius. Boy Genius. What's that? Oh, they're a band. There we go. Boy Genius, uh, Phoebe Bridgers, uh, Julian Baker, and oh my God, she's always... She's, <laughs> cut that out, but keep it in. But cut that out. But cut, what, what am I cutting out? I can't remember the third person in the band. Oh, they're not going to listen to the podcast if you're right. But what? You're fucking... I'm going to tag the shit out of Boy Genius. <laughs> yeah, Boy Genius is amazing. Um, cool. a, a band. And um, the show you should watch is um, fucking feel good, I guess. That's old. Take it. Love it. Lovely. It's Canadian. Love it. Feel good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for coming on. Been thank brilliant, you so much guys. For thank you. Me. It's been fun. Thank you very much. Goodbye, everybody.